uh, really excited about this webinar because it's um, the, the public worldwide debut of Hub City. Um, and uh, uh, this, this pr uh, initiative was done on behalf of the FEAST project, which is a Horizon Europe uh, Swiss Research Foundation UKRI funded project. Um, and uh, what we're looking to do, next slide, is to make it easy for every person in Europe uh, to eat a healthier, more sustainable diet. And by that, what we mean is, um, uh, uh, previous slide, please. Um, by that, what we mean is uh, we want to ensure that not only are we changing behavior, but we're also making healthier, more sustainable food more accessible, more affordable, uh, so that everybody has an equal opportunity to eat healthily. Next slide. And my background is in healthcare, and this diagram is a little bit busy, but if you look at the top, you can see that health outcomes, where we're looking at length of life and quality of life, and below you have all these different boxes. Um, and these different boxes show the contribution of these different factors or determinants to health outcomes. And what I have circled in red there is clinical care. So this is access to doctors, nurses, hospitals, pharmaceuticals. And clinical care only accounts for 20% of health outcomes. The other 80% are due to, due to these determinants of health, of which diet is probably one of the most important determinants of health. And in the FEAST project, what we're trying to do is to try to support food systems as well as individuals to eat more healthily and more sustainably. And that's exactly what Hub City is, is, is trying to do in the city of Milan. Um, and I think it's been designed in a way that uh, it will actually be able to scale beyond Mil uh, Milan as well. Uh, next slide. And what we're ultimately aiming to do is to create these win-win-win-win food systems where all the key stakeholders in the food systems um, can benefit from the way it's currently set up. Uh, unfortunately, the way food systems are currently set up is usually just the large multinational corporations that are benefiting, and it's usually at the expense of people um, because of uh, non-communicable diseases like type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure. Um, the environment loses out because of our, how our food systems are currently set up. They lead to about one third of global greenhouse gas emissions, 70% of fresh water usage, uh, and um, they account for a large proportion of our, our land usage. And the public sector loses out as well because we're spending 700 billion euros every year on preventable conditions, not to count all of the damage uh, that we're seeing in, in, in our other systems. So this is what we want to do in Feast, and I think Hub City is one of the, the most important steps that we're taking uh, down this path. So with that, I'll hand over to Lena, uh, who represents the Open Dot team that has really been driving this forward. Thank you, Anna. Pleasure to be here. Nice to see you all. Um, I'll just jump directly to the next slide and explain a little bit about who Do Open Dot is. Now, our mission is really to create impact on real needs with empowerment of all actors uh, through shared innovation. And um, really what that means is to generate positive impact through the things that we're really good at, which is design and, and, and technologies. Um, <clears throat> we do that focusing on the real needs of individuals, as well as communities and as well as environment. Uh, we're based in Milan, and we exist for now 10 years, but founded by Dot Dot Dot, which is a multidisciplinary design studio who we continue to collaborate with you know, needed experts of technology and design. But Open Dot was really started as a, as a fab lab in 2014, and then in the course of the last 10 years, uh, entered into the realm of generating positive impact, both through um, uh, fab lab projects and real impact projects. Next slide, please. Um, so we really believe in shared innovation. What that means is that we work with the people. We work with communities. We work with, we start on the focus of trying to uh, address uh, a need of the individual or of the communities. And then around that, we create the stakeholders and design with those people. We call that process uh, co-design. Um, next slide, please. Um, so 
our approach is really centered on social good to create a real change through shared and open innovation and <clears throat> we work that both locally and uh, international uh, as i said the goal is really on real needs it's both on a macro level impact and to providing effective solutions for for the individual's needs so and going back to the co-design it's a methodology based on human design um, centered approach uh, aiming for relevant and impactful design created by all the stakeholders that are involved so what we start from is the, uh, identifying a need which our solution of all by followed by an interve intervention testing and iterations that you will see now in the works to presented today and then finally we implement it and make it available to a wider community next slide please so this is just a summary. Basically, we start out our processes, we research and we explore, we then innovate within a team, uh, again, with the stakeholder, and we disseminate and we create through that an open source dissemination, we create social impact. Uh, moving on, please. Now, as we said, we started with a fab lab. And why that is important is because a digital fabrication lab is a place where one is able to prototype very very quickly and testing out uh, ideas that has um, perhaps a physical or a technological uh, solution and so in that case we can immediately work with the individual the communities and moving on <clears throat> next slide please and uh, equally um, important here uh, what is is the open source the dissemination the fact that we believe in creating uh, impact through uh, generating the knowledge and providing it to as many people as possible. Um, <clears throat> next slide, please. So here we come to FEAST and our role here has been in developing um, hackathons that are focused on a specific need in, in a community. And we, um, work through these hackathons in uh, finding solutions with various teams both experts and designers and really different um, interdisciplinary teams that that go in dive into a an issue a problem a need and coming up with a solution within just two days and so here we are today to look at some of these solutions we are following the um, in feast following the the various hackathons um, we are then uh, supporting the uh, the process following and uh, supporting the development of these prototypes in making it an actual uh, feasible uh, solution that can be implemented. Um, <clears throat> so on this note, I will move uh, the word to or give the word to Elisa Poreca from Food Policy. Thank you so much. Uh, can you tell me if you hear me well? Yes. And Christina, sorry, can you tell me if you have my slides or should I share them? You can you share prefer? them. You can share them. Yes. But, okay, perfect. So just... You should see it uh, right now. Yes. No, wait. Um, or Christina, if you if you have them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, it, it was the wrong uh, wrong file. File apparently. Okay. Can you see? It's loading, but yes. Okay. So thank you again. And I'm very happy. Uh, there should also be connected my colleague, uh, Teresa Materia, uh, who is the responsible of uh, Milan activities related to food, pol uh, food policy and uh, specifically food aid um, and, and food waste reduction. 
And with this being said, uh, I'm here today to present a bit the work that uh, Mila has been doing for almost 10 years at this point. And in the next slide, uh, you can see. Um, Yes, thank you. You can see uh, a bit, let's say, the, um, the realm that uh, the city of Milan started working in 2014. So in preparation of the international uh, uh, exposition uh, that was uh, on, on food issues, the city started to map its food system to really understand what acting on a food system could mean. Uh, and what we were able to, to do is uh, indeed a uh, data collection on all the, the existing uh, databases and, and assets that we had in the next slide, um, to really uh, understand uh, how wide the system was in Milan and what were the assets that we were working on. So we were uh, going from, let's say, uh, food production to the health of people and, and really to, um, or, or what, uh, let's say, families were buying. So the kind of data were very wide, but the idea was really to start from existing assets. One of them, uh, for example, in, in the next slide, um, is related, uh, for example, to agriculture. So maybe this is not uh, something um, very well known, even uh, in, in some cases, uh, but the city of Milan has, uh, huge agricultural surface within the city boundaries. And of course, uh, these areas are linked to agricultural parks in the whole Southern and metropolitan, uh, so the wider area in which Milan is located. And that the city of Milan itself is a landowner and is renting uh, this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, both farms and, um, and surfaces. In the next slide, Yeah, uh, I wanted to, to also mention another key uh, asset that we have been working on in these years, which are our school canteens. Indeed, the city of Milan is managing uh, the whole food system, uh, sorry, school meal uh, system of the city uh, with a municipal agency. Uh, and you can see the numbers, uh, the, it is a very spread infrastructure throughout the city and um, Let's say the, the kind of impact that we can have when addressing sustainability issues linked to these school canteens are, are quite interesting. And I just wanted to mention very briefly uh, in the next slide, one of the biggest impacts that indeed we were able to, to touch with this infrastructure, which is, of course, uh, the reduction of the greenhouse gas emissions uh, equivalent of our menus. Because indeed, um, when uh, using food public procurement uh, as a tool to uh, create uh, healthier diets uh, that are also good for the planet, uh, uh, we were able to achieve uh, from the baseline of 2015 uh, quite remarkable reduction in the in the greenhouse gas emissions, um, and we uh, touched mainly. Um, the, let's say the animal-based proteins shifting to more uh, plant-based uh, choices. So, and this is, was just a, a couple of examples where a city uh, exploiting existing competencies that were already there without a food policy uh, that we approved in, in 2015 can, can touch upon. But what we did uh, thanks to the food policy was also create innovation and uh, in, the next slide, uh, you can see uh, the beginning of some actions that um, were done together with stakeholders uh, related to food waste reduction, for example. Again, here you can see, um, let's say that we exploited again existing infrastructures like the wholesale market and as well as uh, school canteens. Uh, so the food uh, that uh, was going to waste uh, started to be donated. And of course, there are many rules regarding these that change uh, from a state to another. But in Italy, we we had a very interesting uh, change in the law in 2016 that allowed uh, these and made it, made it uh, a bit easier. 
And also thanks to that law, we were able to innovate even more and to establish a completely new initiative that are the local food waste hubs. And that, of course, uh, has been the, the starting point also for the collaboration with uh, Open Dot. And in the next slide, um, you can see a very uh, coincide. And it's, a, it's a, um, a way to try to represent uh, the logistic uh, of what is happening in a local food waste hub uh, in the city of Milan. So this kind of hubs were uh, established thanks to a collaboration between the city of Milan, the local university uh, Politecnico di Milano, and uh, an association uh, of companies, Asso Lombarda, together with the support uh, of the uh, Cariplo Foundation, which is a huge and important grant maker um, in our region, in Lombardy region. So we established the idea to develop local food waste hubs, uh, indeed places uh, that uh, could facilitate uh, a daily logistic for food waste to be donated and then redistributed for social purposes uh, within the same day or with a cycle of uh, to maximum some days, so within a week. And uh, in the next slide, you can uh, also see uh, that uh, in the first one was launched in 2019 and it's in the Isola district, so in the northern part of the city. And uh, throughout the years, we uh, were able to, um, let's say, assess the impact of these hubs uh, thanks to the monitoring uh, that was carried out by the Politecnico di Milano. And uh, let's say that uh, results were so convincing that we spread the places around the city. Um, and we also built uh, a public-private partnership, basically, uh, to ensure also the sustainability in the long term of these hubs. So as you can see from the, the different kind of partners involved, we have different associations managing the places, we have different owner of the spaces that uh, made them available from the municipality to, to other um, partners and different uh, funding uh, partners. So in the next slide, <laughs> yes, uh, a, a small moment of celebration was had uh, when indeed in 2021, we, we received the, the Earthshot Prize for this initiative. But what we were able to, to assess uh, during the beginning of this year were the data coming from 2023. And as you can see, the system, as, as I presented before, was able to recover more than 600 tons in just one year. And there was a huge scale up in the quantities after the, let's say, the, the end of the consequence of the pandemic. And what it's the, the even newer news is that we were able, thanks to the resources that we won uh, with the Earthshot Prize in the next slide, that is my last one, um, we were able to uh, scale up even more this initiative because uh, uh, participatory process uh, uh, was started at the beginning of 2023 to understand uh, what were the, the chances uh, to scale up um, the system in the city and to spread uh, hubs even more in the at local level in the city. And we were able to attract uh, many uh, new proposals. And as you can see, the, the blue spots are the existing hubs and the um, orange ones are the one that we will inaugurate just this year and very soon. And uh, I know that um, time runs out, uh, so I will. I think I have to to give back to to the colleagues. But it it was really uh, thanks to this process, a participatory process, that we were able to link with Open Dot, and I think that was the really beginning of the the work that we. We are speaking about today. Thank you so much, Elisa, for uh, sharing this uh, um, amazing project where we have the uh, the lucky to uh, collaborate for uh, what it was the first hackathon of the Act for Food, Act for Good process. I'm Mirko Balducci, and I'm working as a, as a designer in Open Dot. 
and I'm uh, specifically following uh, mm, the process uh, into the mm, hackathon making. Uh, so hackathons, why that? It was already said by uh, Lina in some way, we like to work uh, mm, connecting together different uh, uh, realities, different backgrounds, different people, so we can take the best from them and try to uh, find a solution that can uh, be positive from different point of view. And uh, the hackathon format uh, is, uh, from this point of view, uh one of the the best and uh, so we decided to proceed in this direction so very short moment with the people in the places and uh, uh, to find the solution and propose to the participant different challenges with the aim to find and produce innovation and improvement uh, we Milan was the first edition that was made exactly one year ago. Uh, just a few months ago, we finished our second hackathon in London. It went great. And uh, about that, we're still making the mentoring phase with the, the people who won the hackathon right now. Uh, Elisa said a lot about uh, the uh, waste hub project from uh, uh, the Milano Food Policy, and uh, that was the first partner that we uh, have for the first hackathon. And together, we uh, make this project together to with uh, Terdezon, who is one of the association who manage one of uh, the different uh, waste hub. Uh, the, the waste hub. And I think that uh, Eliana can uh, spend a few words about the uh, Terrorism Association and uh, where, um, where there was the takeout about this experience that we have together. Maybe, maybe Eliana is not going to. Or she's in mute, or she speak very. Okay. Me? Uh, I guess yeah. that you can hear me, yeah. right? Okay, yes. Great. Now we can hear you. Okay. Thank you, first of all, and sorry for. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm a little bit late. Um, I'm uh, Ileana. I am one of the coordinator of the um, Food Hub Spazio in Difesa located in the uh, in the area named as uh, Galarates in um, the, the west side, let's say, in uh, Milan. First of all, let me thank uh, Christine and Mirko, the staff, for having me here today to share a little bit of our experience during the hackathon process last year. Um, for us, I think it was um, honestly uh, uh, an experience we are still happy and proud of. Uh, so I'm uh, definitely for me. It's definitely a pleasure to to share some words with you. Um, especially, I would focus a little bit on the process, maybe, and uh, on the challenges we faced last year. So, if it's okay with you, uh, and maybe also why uh, I mean the reasons why Akaton for us uh, still uh, is considered as one of the most important moments uh, last year. Um, I would honestly start from here, actually. Um, indeed, it was a crucial moment for us. When we were proposed to host the Akaton, we were definitely so happy. First of all, because it was, let's say, something different among the activities that we usually do. Uh, I'm pretty sure someone mentioned, mentioned it before, but I mean, the Food Hub is a place where we uh, every day provide support uh, to empower families, I mean, fragile families in the area. Uh, so the Akaton was for us actually an occasion to do uh, something different with a totally different approach uh, and uh, definitely a different target. Um, it was a pleasure for us to host students and youth uh, we could share opinions with or could provide um, suggestions and uh, or either 
uh, hypothetical solutions to our challenges. Uh, so it was definitely a change of, let's say, mood and environment uh, that enrich uh, our experiences and um, in our activities. If I could find a challenge among uh, among all the challenges, let's say we can say, I would definitely say um, the, the complexity of the hub. I mean, the the, the food hub, the hub spot in Defesa, as um, definitely a very complex structures. Um, somehow we work on different levels or, and sometimes it's not that easy to make people understand what we do, the way we do, um, the way the different activities interact um, between them. Either the network, there is behind the huge network, there is behind the, the food hub. So sometimes um, it's, not that easy to make people from outside uh, understand how the complex hub works, basically. Um, according to my personal point of view, we were definitely helped, first of all, by the fact that the students and the youth, I mean, people come to visit us before. So we had a moment to share our experience, to visit the hub, to get to know a little bit better and deeper the, the area, I mean, the physical area of the place, um, the people who work there, and to, to I mean, we had the opportunity to to get to know better the activities that uh, we usually we usually have. Uh, the other aspect that, according to me, allow us to um, provide, let's say, a solution to this challenge uh, was that we host directly the hackathon in the hub itself. This is not a detail, uh, of course. According to my personal point of view, the people that we host uh, had the opportunity to meet the people every day uh, work in the hub. Uh, the people every day live, basically, the, the environment of the hub. So we were definitely, uh, we have been brought, I mean, I said also me, even though I spent all the, of my days in the hub, but still it was a totally different experience. So we were brought uh, in the um, total environment of the hub. And according to me, this allows us to make people understand better the way we work and what we do, uh, the things in the way we do. Um, I don't know if uh, it, it sounds, um, it makes sense for you, uh, but for us, it was definitely a key point no no absolutely makes a lot of sense it was uh, a, a wonderful a wonderful experience and uh, mm, really helped us to uh, get connected with the, the the reality of the place which i mean at least for me i think for a lot of us was wasn't really the our reality so it was a new place for us so there was a lot to learn and if i can I don't know if you uh, finish, Ileana, can... Yeah, just let me add that um, maybe uh, not, it, it, it was also different because we work in a different way. I mean, as uh, respect with the other food hub, it's not just, you know, a storage for food, but there is a, definitely a different mechanism. So this is just to say that I, I totally agree with you, with what we were saying. Thank you, Ileana. And uh, yeah, I mean, what happened uh, in the process that we um, make together, especially in the first hackathon, was really to went to the to that place to uh, learn with them, uh, which were which were the, the the problem and the possible solution for uh, uh, that specific situation in that specific area of the city. So. Uh, we went there, we spent uh, more or less a day in the uh, Spazio in Difesa and uh, um, we proposed to the participant of the hackathon three challenges where we were decided before with uh, uh, Ted Desom and Milan Food Policy that for us will make sense in a way uh, to be uh, explored and some of the the challenges were um, were about what uh, Eliana explained just a few few moments ago so uh, the networking around the different association that uh, in a way collaborate 
inside the world of uh, food hubs or in specifically uh, in the world of uh, spazio in difesa uh, how to communicate to the citizen that these these spaces exist and uh, some of the citizens of this town are using them and uh, maybe other can use them in a different way or there can be some um, way to make these two words that sometimes don't speak with each other uh, be more connected and uh, something more about the services service system innovation so how to uh, make different uh, actor of this uh, this project uh, be able to speak in a more efficient way uh, so I was as I was saying the uh, event took place in Milan there were uh, uh, 14 participants uh, with three teams and uh, we spent the first two days uh, uh, all together working uh, among Spazio in Defesa and here this space that you can see behind me in Open Dots. And then the student had uh, one week uh, to uh, work together and the student or the, the participant have uh, one week to work together. Uh, meanwhile, we were doing some mentoring to them. And after one week, uh, they present to us their ideas uh, and uh, uh, the jury decide who was the winner. Uh, here, a wonderful photo of all of us together. And uh, the group who win uh, decided to work specifically on uh, this challenge that I'm going to read to you. So, how to connect the different entities to facilitate mutual collaboration and create new synergies between different services. So uh, that was really a huge challenge, how is it we, we are going to see right now, because uh, it means that uh, ah, here we can see the team and they won the, um, the challenge. So Daniela, that we're going to tell us something about it uh, in just a minute about the project, Alberto, Francesca, Sabrina, and uh, I were there as a mentor together with Riccardo. So Hub City, this is the name of the project Wuhan, uh, really try to get in a specific part of the, uh, of the problem that was really hide in some way because try to understand how to make a different subject uh, uh, working together in a better way and how to communicate the service and be more digital and especially keep track of the goods that they receive and distribute uh, from the food the policy. Um, I will let uh daniela speak about a little bit uh, of the project more in detail and then at the end uh, we can show you uh, the prototype that uh, came out uh, in the mentoring phase thank you mirko hello everyone i'm daniela i'm gonna share a little bit about mirko already shared what uh, hope city is about i will share a little bit about the process that we went through to develop this idea to arrive at Hub City. Um, to arrive at this idea, what we did first was, um, since our challenge was connecting different entities to facilitate collaboration and create new synergies, we knew that we needed to get a little bit of understanding about the actors in Hub Galarates' ecosystem. Uh, the roles, the services they offer, and also how these services specifically work. All trying to understand the workings of it all and to identify these synergies that would seem most interesting for our final proposal. And after some, we did some desk research, some interviews, we first arrived at this um mapping of everyone involved at the hub Galarateese. we identified for example here we can see on the below part of the map the um, 
actors that were operating inside of the hub and then on the top part the actors that were um operating outside of the hub and then also we identified who were the core actors as you can see in the center of the map so who was owning uh, or managing the hub then also direct actors who were those strategic partners in decision making to deliver the services and then outside who were those uh, indirect actors you know for example people who are volunteering for the hub or the beneficiaries who are just being directly affected by the services that they then use so we got a, a first uh, general picture of who's involved, how were they involved, and also the relationships between them. Uh, next slide, please. Then we dug a little deeper into specifically the services. So here we can see, for example, how we try to digest and understand the complexity of the food donation process inside of Hope Galaratese. Um, we can see, if, um, yes, the process from beginning to end, for example, how Hub Galaratese, from who Hub Galaratese gets the surplus donations, so from the great distribution, supermarkets, um, the actors involved in delivery, the pro, and then how they translate this into the food donation services, for example, Hub Galaratese not only shares donation boxes with beneficiaries, but they also have a social supermarket in place where beneficiaries can then go and let's say shop for the goods that they need. Um, and at this time, since we already had like the big picture of pretty much everything, everyone involved and also the stages of the process of the food donation process in which they were involved we could already see like the of course the system the complexity of the system um and also we could see how this complexity in, served for some maybe disconnect between some actors and some potential synergies that we could see emerging to make the process more um effective to um, for people for actors to collaborate better etc and at this time was when we started discussing with our mentors the idea of a mapping as being the first let's say grand step into that would help open the space for new collaborations and new synergies to happen so before trying to do anything we realized that we needed to understand um, how everything really is connected and translate this visually for all of the actors in the system so that to empower the actors to then do other things. And so the Hope City idea came to be. And the next uh, slide, please. And then after um, we defined Hub City, we continued, we went backwards, we retraced all our steps, we filled in better the details, for example, for Hub Galaratese, and then we started looking at all of the other hubs. At that time, there were five hubs, so Galaratese, Chintra, Isla Galambarate, and Fudi. Uh, digging deeper into all of the actors involved, and also like we, um, um, like we already saw before, Hope Galaratese um, not only provides food-related services, but they provide services to the person. So also understanding who is involved in delivering the services, details like seasonality of the services, categorizing the services, like we can see here, and also understanding who these services are for. Are they for teens, pre-teens, adults, seniors, etc and the next slide please and um, this is where i step out all of this mapping allowed us to create a matrix of information uh about the hubs all of the actor system all of the details of the services the beneficiaries the donors the partners to create a back end of information for the that would become then the base for the prototype application of hub city 
Uh, and like you can see here, we started <laughs> with the help of Ricardo, one of the mentors. We started to define this backend, and then afterwards, we started to draft some ideas of the user experience of the application. And this is where I leave the floor to Mirko so he can continue to share about the, more about the process of how the um, application prototype came to life. Thank you. And I leave the floor to Mirko. Thank you, Daniela. Uh, well, as you can see, um, the process was quite complex because the challenge was really complex. I mean, the complexity of uh, relationship uh, in, a, in a town, a city like Milan, especially on uh, this specific topic, uh, uh, required to uh, deal with this problem uh, in, a, in a different way. So we didn't uh, necessarily go uh immediately deep down uh, to try to resolve something but we try to make uh, a platform that can help us uh, to then get on on the project uh, and try to go more deeper about the the specific problem so this is what uh, abcd is is uh, a platform that try to connect connect together different actors and give them uh, an instrument to work together and uh, at the same time uh, giving uh, also to the citizen uh, the possibility to discover what these uh, places are uh, what can serve which services can offer and in some way uh, open up a little bit more uh, these places uh, to the to different people i can now uh, showcase to you quite quickly the uh, prototype that we made. Just a second. Okay. So here we have the Hub City prototype with this uh, home page that want to uh, give the possibility to uh, different actors to uh, register to the platform and to who don't know, know anything about uh, uh, the project learn something about, about, about it. So it's kind of a sort of presentation of the Hub City uh, project and process. At certain point, uh, there is this uh, map that uh, can give you the possibility to see the different uh, uh, hubs uh, and which kind of association working uh, over there. So the map have uh, filters uh, and you can directly go on a specific hub and the page of a specific hub can give you uh, a, a system of tag that can you let you understand what specific uh, uh, topic uh, in some way uh, are uh, people front inside the um, the single app uh, some information and uh, um, the services that they have provided to the to the people and uh, some information about them so like if it's free or not, uh, if there is a, a specific target, uh, and uh, who manage the services. So this was the first step to uh, help us to make some order in the uh, something that were, uh, is really complex, and that always are really complex, uh, the things in general. So uh, that's why we decided to go deep in this, uh, in this direction. Uh, I take back the presentation. And right now uh, is the moment for uh, some Q&A. And uh, feel free to ask if something wasn't clear. Uh, we are here for that.
or even say that uh, we make a great job we want and we are happy to hear about it <laughs> great job great job <laughs> thank you go for it anand i always have questions does anybody else have their hand raised or should i go i'll give the floor to somebody else if they have a question otherwise i always have lots and lots of questions no other okay um i think this is fantastic um I, I mean, I suppose from a strategic perspective, uh, with now that this data collection is digitized, you're really going to be able to get into like proper analytics to be able to figure out how to optimize some of the food redistribution and food waste avoidance processes. Is there any strategy in place as to how this data will be used on a regular basis or reviewed? And um, is there a timeline for when this will be rolled out to all of the hubs? Uh, wait a second. Uh, I can start, of course, if then uh, someone from uh, want you to, to join to an answer to, to Anant, no, no problem. Uh, well, of course, the, um, what we show right now, it was the front part of the project. So what we, people will see, but uh, in uh, the, the idea from the group, the the, the main part of the project was the, the back end, so the, the, the part that uh, we stay behind the, the project. We already started to uh, develop uh, what is normally called a CMS, so a system that can uh, organize information, uh, not only to showcase in the platform, but also to make possible to uh, start to have uh, uh, an instrument that can you um take actual decision and uh, uh, make the process uh, more efficient uh, among uh, all actors so uh, we already started to design and prototype uh, this uh, this part also but of course uh, will be a, a long process uh, for us in, in uh, to have an actual product uh, the collaboration with the food policy is, of course, open. So we uh, collaborating with us um, a, and trying to understand how to make this project go on uh, in a more in, in the best way possible. Of course. Okay. Hi. I see there is a question in in the chat, uh, and so maybe uh, I don't know if we uh, have uh, Elisa uh, to respond, or uh, if not, we have Daniela. That uh... Uh, yes, I'm here, but uh, happy to take it with Daniela. The question, the question comes from Maria Alonso Martina. Hi, Maria. And the question asks about, it asks to expand a little bit on how the social supermarket in Hope Gadaratese works. How does the distribution work exactly? And in the management of the social supermarket, the municipality, if the municipality has a role or not, this is the question. Uh, yeah, so let's say that the role of the municipality, and again, there is also my colleague, uh, Teresa, in the call, and she's the one actually dealing directly with all the procedures. Um, but let's say that the, the role of the municipality is mainly in the facilitation of the process. Of course, there is a huge contribution in, in terms of uh, creativity, let's say, uh, and in the support on, on many aspects, it's not just to, to uh, call for meeting and, and have everybody, even if that it's, it's really key. And also municipalities are in a great position to, to establish uh, tables for discussions and also related to funding indeed. Um, so let's 
let's say that um, I'm sorry, I, I miss uh, the second half of the question. Maybe please. Um, how does the social supermarket uh, work? Okay, I, I don't know if Ileana is still here. If she she wants to, no. No, I can okay. I I can share like the social supermarket by the Hub Galaratese is is managed by Ter de Soms, but but also another nonprofit organization called EV, EBVA, and they also EBVA manages another social supermarket in the Hub Centro, and how the social supermarket works is that they receive. Like the hubs receive the surplus donations, then they um, some of these donations go for boxes and other donations go inside of the supermarket and the supermarket works uh, well, through a point system. So you are a person, you need to have a specific profile to benefit from the social supermarket. You go to the hub, they give you a, let's say like a credit card a points card with a number of points per month and then you go on the specific schedules to just exchange your points for the goods that you want to to buy and this is uh, how it works it's a point exchange system and what uh, beneficiaries can get from the supermarket is a lot like they get food, but also diapers, a lot of baby products, baby food, and also other uh, other goods that are not food related as well. And I don't know if this answers if our answers are good for Maria. <laughs> yes, okay. If there are not other questions, I can uh, leave the word to Lina to uh, close uh, this moment together and uh, give us some tips about the next step. Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, congratulations to um, the uh, the project, and, and it um, it's it's really exciting. And uh, and now the next step is how it's going to spread out now. We are fully in process with the next acceleration program of the team that was winning the London edition, which was focused on um, uh, healthy eating habits for um, uh, adults with, um, disabil uh, with uh, learning disabilities, especially in a, a specific area of London. And uh, so the winning teams are now, there are two winning teams now in fully process. Uh, with Open Dot in um, creating the uh, the prototype and the final results, uh, so please follow uh, these projects on the uh, social media um, um, addresses, and and then the next hackathon coming up will be in Kaunas in Lithuania in September 2024. So also follow here for any news that we will we will bring out on on this upcoming it's exciting because this will be a hackathon um created or uh, generated around children so we will have um hackathon where the actual participants will be children so this is really really exciting so um on that note and we'll change to the next uh slide i want to thank you all um everybody involved internal team of open dot on behalf of of all and um if you want to stay connected um please find our addresses here on your left hand side and uh or just follow us on on instagram and so as we say see you in counters for the next hackathon online i imagine so anyway it was a pleasure well done everyone There's a raised hand. Mm, was to say hi. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye. 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 Thank you.